It's been, God, it's been six years. Sitting up in the rafters for 20 years, but it's only been <laughs> five or six. Look at that. Hot oh, damn. Wow. I remember this. So, you need to make that amp cut it with a drummer and bass player. So, we need more bottom end, we need a little bit more help in the top, and we definitely need more volume. But I forgot this part. We had made a power transformer and an output transformer. We were originally going to use this flat pack power transformer design for the LX2, and then we scrapped that because it was too noisy and went with a went with the uh, the toroid. But I meticulously built this perf board for the power amp section and haphazardly slog together the inductor component of the thing for the reactive load part. And I needed a bracket for the power tube socket and I just found, I think what I had done is I'd gone to uh, some electronic surplus place and found an aluminum box and just sawed off a piece of it because it had this little bit to get the bend. I needed a piece that had the bend so that I could have it stand <laughs> up. And it had, it was a, a little part of a box that had that bend. And so we took that and just cut it off. You fashioned it. I fashioned it together to make that little bracket. We have a whole very sophisticated uh, load bay to manage the different uh, impedances. Mm. But this one only has a an 8 ohm mode. So it's got the three position switches for the three impedances, but the input impedance is, is only eight. And I remember now that the input on this is only eight, but the output is 4, 8, and 16. Oh, interesting. And then okay. when we were expanding on the development of it, we took the prototype and then we put this other little assembly on the outside to extend it. The input oh, no imp kidding? impedance system. So, so how we actually had it set up for evaluation was this plus this thing just rat wired over into here. And that's why these resistors are all here because we're experimenting with different uh, values of, of filters for the, the high frequency and low frequency oh, voice got it, got it. And I remember that we didn't have the right, just, I was being lazy and we didn't have the right voltage capacitor for this part of the circuit, so this capacitor is a little under voltage, and that why it's, that's why it's curved in the top, because it's about to blow. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but we kept it running long enough to do the development of it without it blowing up and figuring, well... It made it. We had a few more of them, so if it blew, we were just going to put another one in and just keep blowing them until we got done, and until I finally broke down and went, okay, I'm going to go get a 50-volt capacitor instead of a 35. <laughs> If, if I was guessing my motivation behind that at the time, I would have just said, because I had no patience and I wanted to get on to the next step of developing the thing and I couldn't be bothered with if something was going to blow the top of his filter cap off. Yeah. It would be something predictable and not a disaster, so I could care less. Let it blow. Let's move but, on. Here's the real fun part. You probably hadn't noticed and anybody watching this will not have noticed and this would be the reason why when everybody says aren't you concerned about heat i say no look there's Bob, no ventilation there whatsoever there you go very good observation <laughs> <laughs> that's how we ran it <laughs> we don't need no stinking ventilation no. Yeah. 